Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is finally time for your potentially game-deciding series-ending number three. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. You are watching the SEA League, and this one will be a solo cast. Cinder and did have to go. Unfortunately, he had another obligation, and well, it appears every every person who could cast with me is either AFK or not responding, so it's a solo cast. Hopefully, you guys don't mind, but Zenith is going to be down 2-0 currently, uh, or 0-2 rather. <laughs> I don't know how you could be down 2-0. But uh, the one thing that really sticks out to me as we look at this draft with Orange leading 2-0, there's actually two things. One of them is that Mushiquap was not banned. No huge surprises there, but what's interesting is the Keeper of the Light slips through and Orange pick it right away. We saw last game that they were banning it in the first... Uh, hmm. No, that wasn't true, was it? No. <laughs> in game one, in game one, it just slipped through and was ignored. And in game two, it was banned in the first stage. That's right. I'm, the games are mixing up a bit in my head. So we're actually going to see them pick up the Keeper of the Light and the Luna, which is the makings of a very strong pushing lineup. But what they really need is that beefy frontline hero, something like an initiator. And, well, the ideal hero was picked already. It's the mag. We don't know what Mushi's going to be playing. Let's see if they go with a similar style. With this Keeper pick, you can angle for a Luna 1v1 matchup. Um, you can angle for that Luna to be 1v1 versus the Magnus, which Zenith took with the first pick. And Luna can actually do quite well in that 1v1, which frees you up to go aggressive tri-lane. We might see something like a Nyx Assassin here by Orange to try and force that aggressive tri-lane. And that would be actually very Sorry, potent. No, well, it still could be the offensive tri-lane. They have the Zenith Sand King. What we saw Orange do, uh, or IG do is actually keep a light Sand King and Windrunner. That particular tri-lane is super powerful just because you have so much spam and a hero like Lion can't do anything against it, so I quite like the start to this draft, but when you're up against a support like Lion, well, potentially a support, I guess it could always be a mid, but we just don't Dyer see that anymore. Uh, he needs a lot of levels, and until he has them, he's quite weak in tri-lane versus tri-lane action. So right now, I'm feeling like Orange is going to put most likely the Luna in the safe lane, try and go 1v1 uh, versus the Mag. It could be an offlane Enigma, though, and that's a much harder matchup for Luna. But if it is a Mag offlane... Uh, she could do pretty well. You could also throw the Luna mid, anticipating the Mag to be there, and then something else versus the Enigma. So either way, Arch can angle for that, and that's something we saw LGD Int do, where Pycat would go mid as Luna. So we definitely could see that, and it looks like Zenith is at least suggesting they want to throw the Magnus mid, because they're banning out, well, a lot of the heroes who would benefit from not really being in any danger of dying, and who can't be harassed out of lane. Heroes like Shadowfeet and TA, those strong semi-carries who obviously, especially... Oh, all of Mushi's heroes getting banned now. This is just some Mushi hate from Zenith. Uh, banning out the, the Shadow Fiend, the TA, and the Queen of Pain. So what is Mushi going to play? It's the one issue with not picking up Zenith's his heroes now. To pick. And we'll see what they go for. But you can throw uh, you can throw one of those heroes mid versus Mag. And Mag can't really stop them from farming. At the same time, Luna does reasonably well against Mag. Just needs to be pulled some early regen. Go for something like the early bottle. Uh, or Tranquil Boots, and she can actually lane pretty well against him 1v1 and get a lot of farm. And Zenith's lineup, they're not going to be ganking early. With a Lion, you're not going aggressive, so Orange should be a bit greedy here, especially with Enigma as well, even if he's in the lane. And it, Zenith going for a Visage, so... Well, normally you pick Visage to go aggressive tri-lane, but Lion is normally a support that you just want to be very passive with and get a lot of levels and farm. And... I mean, I'm, I'm a little flummoxed right now, I'm going to be honest about it. Because uh, these two seem at cross purposes with each other. Uh, it could be a mag mid, it could be... I just don't know, guys. Honestly, I'm not sure how this... I, I mean, I'm feeling like maybe this will be a solo mid lion. Ten seconds but he actually does quite well against the hero like Queen of Pain. Uh, in Zenith, especially ten, if, you, if you have any sort of backup. But Orange is going to go for Lone Druid. Multiple cores for them. I guess it's a KYXY Lone Druid. We're looking at a Keeper of the Light Luna plus one. And I guess the Sand King could be that plus one. So really, it's just Mushi's hero. Unless they want to put the Lone Druid mid. He does pretty well against Mag. You can put him there. And Zenith, again, their lineup isn't really the best ganky lineup. Even though Visage is strong in the tri lane, he's not really a strong ganker. And okay, so it's going to be a Naga. This Naga is strong in tri lanes. Normally, he's a great partner with Visage. But the Lion pick... Just seems a little bit strange with these two because again there are better supports if you just want to go for a killing tri lane but it looks like they want a little late game assurance with that instant disable that's a way to bring down luna uh before she and they have two actually two things that go through bkb now with the magnus ult and the enigma ult so if this goes late you have two ults you can use seconds, one for each carry and be in quite good position you also have the light hex which even though luna normally goes for bkb seconds, that hex is instant and as well as the naganets they actually have three ways to deal with bkb 
And they had the net to look to deal with the Lone Druid Bear. They have some very annoying heroes, basically, for these carries. And I'm still not sure what Mushi's going to play this game. He's really... He's a bit limited here. Hmm. I can't even remember what else he's played. It's always been TA Quap or Shadowfeed. I mean, obviously he plays other heroes. Gyrocopter is something that he's played in pubs in the past. It is a very powerful tri-lane hero, but they don't really have a great lineup to run a Gyrocopter with because they don't have a setup stun. And... Well, what's it going to be? Hmm. You got to figure it's a KYXY offlane lone druid. Sack. Well, we'll find out in a moment. It could be... It's going to be Kachik Emba playing the Luna. That's not a surprise. Nets on the Keep of Light. Mushi Le Shrek. He's going mid with this one. And are they going to run dual lanes? They could. They could run the Sand King Le Shrek dual lane mid... And the Luna Keeper of the Light safe lane bottom. My one concern is this Luna's rather unprotected. And when she gets netted, which she's likely to, because she has low range, if she wants to farm, she's probably getting netted. There's no real way to protect her. There's no disruption. There's no telekinesis lift. Uh, we could see the, We could just see a tri lane with Mushi solo. And it could, it's going to be that Mushi versus XY matchup no matter what. But with all that being said, guys, it looks like the game is finally underway. I just want to make sure there aren't any technical issues with the stream. And should be good to go. Prepare for battle. So on the side of Orange, we have Extinct playing the Sand King. They are, oh, offensive. Oh, they could go offensive tri lane with this. Actually, I didn't think about that. It's just you never see Mushi not go mid, but they are going to do that Luna mid that I mentioned as a possibility. Uh, it's going to be Kachik Emma playing it. It looks like anyway. Extinct on the Sand King. Mushi on the Lashrak. Net on the Keeper of the Light. This is a very potent tri lane. The one thing they're lacking is that initiation stun, but what they have in spades is damage and just spam. It's going to be very difficult for anyone on Zen's side to farm. We have KYXY on the Lone Druid. He's going mid, so it is going to be Kachik Imba in the safe lane. This is a hard matchup for Luna up against Enigma. Would like to see her get pulled, and she has not been. Just starting with two sets of Tango, so this could be a tough lane for Luna, but the trade-off will be tons of pressure for Zenith in that safe lane. And... Well, I assume they're going to leave, leave the tri lane here. Just lo looks like they're just doing a bit of warding. The bear scouting everything out to ensure that nobody gets picked off. And you can also use the bear to just block the spawn. So this is very annoying. And Zenith don't really have the best lineup to actually gank the bear. X Freedom's got to be careful. I want to I want to introduce his team, but we're not going to have time. There's a burst strike to start off the fight, and then a two hero impale. The illuminate splashes through. If they get off one more stun, this will be the death of Yamate. Mushi's out for blood. Nice body block attempt by Ice, and he will be able to block it. But now he may pay with his own life, sacrifice his own to save the support. And now Yamate actually comes back in. Mushi's going to have a stun in five seconds. They're forced to back off. Wow. I am just. He had no business being there. It was a nice bait by Orange, but you just have to expect. Uh, I guess they didn't expect the tri lane, which is understandable because it's Mushi, but you just got to be really careful when there's heroes like Sand King on the track, and they're already going to be roaming around a lot. So, on the side of Zenith, now we have a moment. Yamate on the Naga Siren, something we saw him play a lot of in Orange. Ice is going to be playing the Lion, and we're going to have X Freedom on that support Visage. Solo mid will be XY handling the Magnus, and in the top lane, it will be Ice Ice Ice. Now, this is the one lane that Zenith should have a clear edge in. The Magnus versus Luna is a very difficult matchup for Luna. Especially if the Mag uh, if the Enigma plays it properly. Not only are you under a lot of harassment from Eidolons, but you also get denied a lot of experience. And Luna really wants that quick level 6. The mid lane should go well for Orange. This is something that Lone Druid can dominate a Mag 1v1. He may not be able to completely shut him down. You can use that Shockwave spam. He's got the bottle up now to get some farm. But, uh, and you can use the bear to deny runes and stuff. But you still, you can't fully deny the Magnus. Nice play by... KYXY, he's keeping the creeps out of tower range. This ensures that he won't have to last it under the tower. And already the harassment flies forth. No stout shield on him. They are offensive tri -laning. They've actually blocked this spawn. And let's see if... Oh. He's not gonna, he's not gonna notice. He should be suspicious, though. Because this camp is... There's no creeps here. Oh. And now he might realize it. He wants to place a sentry, but he doesn't want to block the camp. He's trying to figure out a way to put it down. Uh, I think you have to put it, like, right over here. Nope. <laughs> he's still... <laughs> he's trying to find... No, I guess he's just waiting in the jungle. Not going to deward that one. And the thing is, they can't really do too much pulling, because if Naga gets caught by the chain stun, she is absolutely dead. As mentioned before, there's no disruption, there's no good disengage spell. And even a hero like Lion coming into stun is very dangerous, because his base move speed is atrocious. It's 290, he's going to check the 2-minute rune. Rune will spawn top, the bear is going to deny it. XY is going to have a hard time getting any of these runes. And 
no pulling happening right now. The cramp will finally spawn. So the offensive trailing for Orange, what they're really good at is pressuring the tower. We already see the early run of Basilius up on Mushi. And I want to see how this top lane's going as well. Luna, 11 and 9, actually leading the farm. Enigma, only 1 and 3. Wow, talk about getting outplayed. Kachik Yimba, the stand-in. He's had some impressive games, but he's gotten a lot of protection. This game, he's on his own against a savvy veteran in Ice Ice Ice. And he is just destroying that lane, and he wasn't pulled. Kachik Yimba did not start with any pulled rage, and he's still, he's just farming really well. And this is a match, this is the lane that they should be winning for sure with the Enigma. Uh, once the Sol Ring comes out, it does get a bit more difficult. But Arms, so far, so good. Kachipi and Miss holding his own in the mid lane. KYXY is dominating that lane. Well, not dominating, but he's controlling the runes and he's slightly out farming the mag, which is a solid victory. Then in the bottom lane, things going quite well. So you gotta say, Arms is doing well in this lighting stage, and they are actually doing better than I even thought. Wow, look at the lead. Already over 1,500 gold, uh, 1,000 experience lead. Quite a substantial advantage for them. And even Mushi's getting farm. Radiant it's just so dangerous for this Naga attack. to approach the creeps because they don't have something like Disruption to keep her safe. She's forced to mostly farm with Riptide at best, and I, even in some cases, when she gets the Mirror Image, she'll use that. Tr three carries, and all of them are farming. This is normally a good way to lose a game. We could see a quick 3-0 victory here for Zenith, uh, or for Orange. The creature even already stolen. Ice gets caught, and that look at just how squishy oh, the lion is. But extinct, forced to back off because the Naga comes in, keeping the lights running him down. Gandalf wants this feisty little wizard. He's not able to pick him off. Now the Sankey on the way out, and in the end, he will escape. Ice 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 actually just got outplayed so hard in his lane that he's abandoned the top lane. He's now just jungling. You don't run this Enigma off lane to send him to the jungle. You only do this if you're up against the tri lane. If you're forced to go to the jungle 1v1, something's gone horribly wrong, and XY's in a lot of trouble. Oh, he's barely going to live. That Orb of Venom uh, does slow him down, but not enough to kill him off. He's just bottle crow, and this is really the only thing he can do. He can't really get the runes, and what makes this worse? Enigma's not a good hero to check the runes. Uh, especially when he's supposed to be in the off lane, or at best is jungling very defensively. And the defensive Charlie can't leave to go check them, so this ensures with the lone druid bear that Orange is going to deny all the runes to the Magnus, which makes it harder for XY to create pressure around the map, and that's his role is that solo mid mag. You don't run a mag mid to farm. Sure, the farm's nice, but you run him to hit level 6, control the runes, and start creating space for your other lanes, particularly your carry. Orange, just a fantastic start for them. And I gotta say, I never thought I'd see the day where Mushi would be a Lashrac in an offensive tri -lane. This shows some real versatility. And that has clearly caught Zenith by surprise. Zenith, the team that most people know for the versatility. There's the Burrow Strike in. Catches out Ice. And Ice is an old... Just dead. Just flat out dead. Burnt down by the light. Justice administered by Net. What a devastating tri -lane this is. The one thing I mentioned they were a bit lacking on is initiation. But when Sankin has boots... And your lion does not. You're not lacking because <laughs> Sankey can just walk up to you and you're too slow to run away. You're helpless. Ice, Ice, Ice just still out of that top lane. Look at the lone Druid diving past the tower. KY, XY. Everybody stepping up to the plate. XY is almost dead. He is going to be fairing out his bottle again. He has a monopoly on it, which does hurt Ice, Ice, Ice a bit. The fact that there's a lone Druid mid versus a mag means that he just he can never use the courier pretty much. The, the mag really just needs to be permanently bottle crowing. A little bit of clash here between the supports. In fact, Net might get a kill. There's the slow. He's got to just run away. Nice shoot. Not going to hit. Now Ice comes in and suddenly Net's in a bit of trouble. He's going to run towards the middle lane. But I think they have enough to bring him down. The Grave Chill is there. The sole assumption, though, is what kills off the kill. Meanwhile, mid lane. All of a sudden, good movement from Zenith. This is what they needed to do. They were losing all three lanes. So what's the solution? And the laning stage early. We're going to see Enigma come out of the jungle. Set up a kill mid. Uh, the RP was used there as well. They have a haste now. And two quick kills go in their way. The gold graph starts to dip. The experience graph starts to dip a lot. And one thing, the one downside of this offensive tri lane, Mushi's only level 4. Sand King, very level dependent support, only level 4. At the same time, though, Lion's level 2 and Naga's 3. So they're not getting many levels, but neither is Eth. Oh, here comes Mag. He's hasted. The wards have just died bottom. They're not prepared for this rotation for the Magnus. XY is about to make a big play for his team. Scary and Extinct into the tower. Extinct's going to burst strike. They're two heroes, but there are four here. And down will go to the Shockwave. Now Mushi's likely to drop. Ice is low, but Ice will not survive. Mushi gets the kill at the very least, but Mushi's going to fall in exchange. He pays for his insulin. It's a double kill for XY. 
Now Ice 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 rotating the lane. We have to keep in mind, Luna has been totally left alone. They are finding a lot of kills and making the correct adjustments, but they're still abandoning their en the enemy safe lane to get free farm to Luna. Naga dodging away from that Illuminate, but the Burrow Strike here might be enough to get the kill. Burrow Strike there just need a couple of seconds of body block. Doesn't actually find it. That Naga has very good base move speed. I believe it's 320. Uh, or maybe it's 315. But it is enough for her to get away. Now they have a black hole up. They should any moment. Ice, ice, ice. Wow, so under level. Gonna take a second to breathe here, but it looks like we are gonna have a drums coming out. So the pressure is gonna continue to mount from orange. We have not seen Kachik Emba go for any really greedy carry builds. When Mushi's playing that one position, we often see him rush things like a Battle Fury, a Midas. Uh, oftentimes on heroes like a Faceless Dyer's Void uh, or an anti mage just going for the really greedy Battle Fury with basically uh, nothing else. Oh, XY could just, no, can't scare him up on the hill. I expect we'll see LG, sort of LGD and S. I expect we'll see this Luna joining the fight soon. Uh, but for the moment, it's just creating pressure top. Drawing some, drawing the Enigma that way. Naga's still only level 5. Remember, there is a black... There's still not... Really? Alright, now that should be a black hole very soon. It's eight and a half minutes in. You just don't expect an Enigma who had free farm... I mean, the thing is, he spent so much time journeying over to the jungle, then going to gank mid, then going back to the jungle. He's made a trip to base as well at one point, I believe. Radiance middle 40 is under attack. <laughs> I said he was having free farm. He's having 46 freaking denies. Holy mother effing god. I mean, it, granted it's an empty lane, but it just means if Ice 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 wants to farm there, he's got a base and he's even pulling the creeps. Kachik Imba has played exceptionally well here today. I gotta say, the stand in for me is the story of this game. Whether even if they go on to lose, I mean, just the way he's played in the laning stage, there aren't many people who can beat. At Enigma, in the safe lane, not being pulled regen. Uh, especially a savvy, experienced veteran like Ice Ice Ice, who doesn't seem so savvy right now. The supports for Zenith are still very underleveled. Extinct's up to level 5, Mushi's level 6. This is a great killing combo. And they've got a, only a level 3 keep of the light, but everyone else is benefiting quite a bit. RP's cooled down though. TP's down in 12 seconds. Oh, they're gonna go in. Burrow Strike to start this one up. Now, the disruption of that engagement, and it's gonna be a Grave Chill on Mushi just to make sure that he can't run next to them and do the damage with even uh, those two points of Edict, but it doesn't matter. Another stun by Extinct. The killing power of this tri lane is a bit too much. Meanwhile, on the middle lane, looks like XY went in with the skewer. I guess he missed. I don't actually know if they can kill KYXY. They may need. To oh, and he's actually going for an early headdress. Are we gonna see a mech on the Sloan Druid? This may just be not an all-in push, but a this line of pen push, but they don't have to. They could angle for mid to late game. They have heroes that scale well. But it looks like they just want to get the item advantage and just bully down Zenith because their supports are not strong at stopping pushes. And they may be able to do it the way this is going. Look at Zenith's supports. Visage, great at killing heroes. Good burst damage. Cannot stop pushes. Lion, uh-oh. Ice is still alive. Wow, he almost dropped. Can't even talk about the game for one second. So much freaking action. But they have nothing. They have Riptide and they have Shockwave. That's it. And there's a lot more than that coming their way when it comes to the pushing lineup. Now, you don't have to build a mech when you get an early headdress. It's not a bad item just to get in the lane to give a little bit of a bump to your creep wave and just give you some sustain. But he's already got Tranquil Boots and that's normally enough. So I do expect he's going mech or maybe a pipe. Lion's still hoofing it back to base. Net is going to rotate back towards the bottom lane, and a lot of teams like to just... The one thing I'll say that Zenith has done well is they haven't lost the tier 1 bottom yet. They've done a good job of holding onto it, but the thing is that Orange just forced the rotation of the enemy mid to that lane. They forced XY to come gank. Sure, he got kills, but he left the lone druid alone mid. You can see the... Uh, the tower isn't taking that much damage, but he's getting free farm while he's snapping. KYXY, all three of the high farmers are on Orange, so... Sure, you got some kills, you got some trade-offs, but that comes at a big cost to Arj because their solos are just dominating the lanes. And if they're left alone, they get free farm. Ice 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 is getting close, closer and closer to a mechanism of his own, but he's still got probably about, I want to say like a 1,200 gold or so to go before he gets that. Uh, including the chainmail recipe and the mechanism recipe, but he's getting closer. The pressure continues bottom lane. Riptide is great at stalling pushes. 
Pearl Strike in. They're going to start off on the Visage. The Song of the Siren is here, prepping for the turnaround. The Enigma's arrived. This was the fight that Zenith were waiting for. They've got all the Vol Ultimates. They catch up Mushi, but he actually has Pulse Nova activate, so he's doing some pretty good damage. He's still alive. A Burrow Strike can turn this around. He Burrow Strikes into the trees. I think he should have gone for Enigma there. May have been able to kill off a few. XY didn't even have to use RP, but... Remember, they're fighting this 3v5. While this is happening, KYXY is pushing mid. Luna's pushing top. And they did just use the black hole. Uh, still a good fight for Zenith. Something they needed, something they'll be happy about. But not a clear win. And now KYXY. He's got the he's got the mech already. The birds come in. Visage is hit level 6. XY is not going to find. Oh, simultaneously. Look, this is this is what I mean. As soon as you go to gank that lane, sure, you're getting kills. Oh, God. Oh god, tell me I'm not the only one that's disconnecting from this game. Uh-oh. I don't think my internet's dying. Top tower I hear the game attack. going. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that little hiccup, guys. I don't think we missed any kills. Not just the two towers dying. Wow. Radiance are just playing fantastically well. And the, oh, the Naga sleeps down. The Black Hole's down. Extinct may actually die here. The Malthus is going to remove that Sandstorm, but they're still on the chase. There's no points of Monoleak yet. And Ice 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 is going to be able to just barely get away. Radiant Once this tier 1 bottom falls, is this is going to be huge trouble for Zenith. Because they don't really have a great ganking lineup. I'm sure they've got a lot of stun. Oh, XY's here. He's got RP. He's got a skewer and he completely whiffs the skewer. And now we're just going to be kited around by Extinct. Extinct is running circles around. The towers go by the creeps. Now Burst dragging back into Ice. Some serious miscommunication here from Zenith. It looks like they did not want to fight, but... Yet the lion ran into his demise. Didn't even get the tower denial. Now, Lone Druid joins the fight. He's got this mech 14 minutes in. Not the fastest mech in the world. But Luna is the real threat. She's almost got a BK freaking B. And Z Orange is just giving Zenith a, chase of, a taste of their own medicine. This was the kind of lineup that Zenith went for last game. Get your core items up. Start pushing. Orange a little bit more five man. Zenith was a little bit more split push last game. But still, kind of a similar strategy. And it's working. Boy, I talked to Winner before the series today, and he really thought Zenith was going to have the edge. He said they had a much more diverse set of strategies overall, and he just felt they had a more complete team right now, especially with Ohio not playing. But the stand-in, the new kid on the block, Kachik Imba, he's playing like a very powerful little guy, which is what his nickname stands for. And after this tower drops, they can easily go Roche. And Zenith, where's the trades? The tier 1 mid, they're going to try and go for it. XY is probably just going to get this tower denied. There's the glyph. The tower's already down, and immediately the TP's coming. XY has to get out of here. He can't get this tower. Well, maybe he'll try. If he gets entangled... Nope, he's going to get it. He gets entangled. Lundra needs one more. We may see a Malphus on the bear. The bear... That... The bears. The bear! The bear's dead. So Zenith get that crucial tier 1. It is actually a little dangerous to go Roche. Now it's a lot more dangerous. Blink Dagger is up on XY. But if Orange... Oh, BKB is up on Luna. They still might be able to bring her down with Eidolon volleys. Even with this BKB. Oh, Kachik Emba. He's played so well, but he's got to sense this one coming. Look at the map right now. Now he knows. Mag's going to reveal it. They're actually not going for it because they see the BKB. They know the Tier 1's still up. They don't want to risk engaging on this Luna. Also... Oh, this is also Orange <laughs> just breaching high ground bottom lane. And as soon as somebody TPs back... We may see Arge. They're just pr trying to draw Zenith away so they can go Roche. 2200 gold up on Mushi. And what's funny about this is the carry Lashrak is sort of Yamate's. It's one of his signatures, and it's actually Mushi doing it this game. Boy, he's... this. I feel like this is just all about rubbing it in his face, and they're not going Roche yet, but you have to know this is coming. And yep, now they're going. Luna's in the pit. There is Black Hole, there is RP, is there smoke up on Zenith? Because if they want to stop this, they got to start moving right now. Let's see. Smoke is up on Lion. He is level 6. He's way down the high ground. No, they're just giving this up. They really... They do have the big teamfight ults, but aren't just so tanky at this point. I mean, even if you hit a nice RP Black Hole, you... They don't really have the damage, I feel, to bring down any of these heroes. So they're forced to just give up the Roche. Nope, no, they're going for it. Okay, they're smoked up. They're coming in. They're going really late, though. I think Roche is about to drop. Nope. They backed out of the pit. The one thing Orange is a tiny bit lacking on is damage, because their carries have gone for a mech on the Lone Druid, as well as a BKB on the Luna. They did get the early mech. They got some towers, and they got some aggressive wards up off of that. But is it worth the trade? That's the question. 
because this lone druid could have gone for a greedier build, could have gone for something like the phase maelstrom, maybe no. the relic. He went for the early mech, it's how they got those towers, but the trade-off is now you can't split push as effectively, and forcing the enemy to go pressure your top lane or defend their top lane is how you go rush. If you push this top or if you push this top lane in, then they have to TP to defend it, then you easily can go rush, and they just can't get there in time. Here comes the RP to start off. There is a BKB, but he can't use it just yet. Now he's Malefist, he does get the BKB off and he tries to TP away. Oh, he should have known he was dead there. But, at the very least, he forced an RP out just by, well, just by having a BKB, really. And this means they're gonna get the tier 1, and the, unfortunately for Arnstein, it's the trade, because they already got this tower bottom. Soul Booster's up a Mushi. TPs are starting to come back. The tier 1 is gonna be mauled down. What looked like a game that Orange was just running away from. I mean, look at how far ahead they are. They're up 7,500 gold. Sure, only 2,000 experience, but that item advantage is absolutely enormous. Net has a gem already. Second game in a row, he's gone for that early gem. Phase boots up on the Druid. Looks like we're going to see that Maelstrom coming out next from KYXY, which is definitely the correct choice in this game. You need to go for that cheaper damage because you have to get an Assault Curse when you're up against the Minus Armor from Riptide, the physical damage from Eidolons, uh, as well as the Familiars, which actually do a lot of damage. Look at that max damage. 56, 98, 154. Uh, as well as... Uh, and they also have enough stuns to bring the bear down. So go for the cheap maelstrom and get the assault curse a little bit earlier. It's a smart build. Lone Druid can solo this with the Luna. Just the two of them is more than enough to bring it down. Meanwhile, Arn just trying to set up mid. They know RP's down. The epicenter will be channeled, but Malefice is here to cancel it. Now the Illuminate comes through. Mushi's out of mana. Extinct gets pushed really far away. I'm a little surprised they try to force this kill. Maybe they're just trying to run interference, but... BKB on the Luna. They're going to go in. Here's the Song of the Siren. KYXY. Oh, he's caught in a lot of heroes. There's a black hole to be set up. Can he get it off? He will channel it. BKB was popped right at the black hole. It's, it's used up, but it doesn't matter because Kachika was fighting himself. He chops off the ult. Maybe it does matter. KYXY was not caught in that. And even without items, Lone Druid is still a scary hero. Double kill for KYXY on the chase. Should really go for ice, but they want this. Well, they want this mag. I think now they'll go back for the lion. Just need one entangle. Oh, he's a little bit out of range. There's your, there's your lucid beam. There's the kill on ice. And now they should be able to go rush, but Mag is here, he comes in with the RP. Oh, they might be able to turn this around, the mech is just not sufficient. Orange just getting outplayed in this fight, you gotta call it that. They also started off very sloppily, the bear's gonna die soon. It doesn't get that final entangle on XY. So many Ys in this game. Ay caramba, what an insane game this has been. What a great series so far. For anyone who's just tuning in, this is currently game number two. Uh, or this is currently game number three with Orange leading 2-0, but it's a best out of five. So Zenith is on the ropes. They have to win this game. They're showing some resilience right now. Yeah, you can see the score up there. But I, I know even though this is here, some people don't have the screen max. They're asking anyway. Mushi is currently locked in a deadly struggle with his arch nemesis, Namate. They used to be friends. It's actually a great soap opera. It's a great story. And they didn't get rushed, by the way, because they left the pit to go fight mid. That was a big miscommunication. I thought they were just trying to stall for it. Oh, Ice is going to get caught. Ice is going to die. I still really question this lion pick. Lion pick. You, you see a Keep of the Light. You know they can go aggressive tri-lane. And then you also pick up Visage and Lion. One of them's great in a tri-lane scenario. One of them's very weak in it. Are you trying to tri-lane or are you not? Just, are you trying to fight an aggressive tri-lane or are you not? It just, it seems a little bit strange. Kachik Imba. Wow, he had such a good start, but he's falling a bit behind. Those are coming to the fight so much and then not really quite getting the kills he would like. He's actually sitting only 1-2-1. One, and one. Still, as always with Orange, you have to point out the vision. They're so good. When they get this early lead, the supports know exactly what to do. We don't see any of that aimless roaming around. Oh, and this is... I, I was actually having a joking conversation with Extinct because Winter and I were talking about this. Extinct, ever since Net has joined the team, Extinct has been getting greedier and greedier. Uh, we used to see him being, I, I feel, a lot more free with purchasing of wards and that sort of thing. Oh, the blink up on Sanki. They could look to go on XY. Nope. Extinct doesn't want to reveal it just yet. Oh, meanwhile, top lane. Luna dies again. They are starting to really prey on the map awareness and positioning of Kachik Imbo, the stand in. He played very well in the landing stage, but this is where it gets hard as a carry, is the mid-game. Sensi when heroes are missing. Net, the veteran, has no excuse for running up that hill by himself. 
if he gets picked off, but he won't. Mag has a four staff as well, but there's a burrow strike to start this off. They don't have a whole lot of follow-up. Nets in trouble now. There's the bear. Skewer on the two. Only RPs the Wow, only really only RPs the key for the light and the bear, but that's not worth it. Anyway, XY giving chase. And they do know the Luna's dead, so they know they'll have some time, but here comes Extinct blinking in, then walking away. Four staff and a blink dagger on XY. He's really starting to create more pressure. KYXY definitely won that lane. But Lone Druid just doesn't have quite the same punch, and he's actually going for a pipe. This is very... Honestly, not typical orange. Typical orange is run multiple carries, get all of them farmed, split push, uh, you know, go for kills. It's not... Zenith is a little bit more focused on the pushing than orange, but you know, go for late game, get multiple carries really fat, and basically have your insurance policy of, oh, we'll never lose a fight. But they're gonna go in bottom. There's your blink to start. Ice does not have his BKB yet. He'll get split earth and epicenter. And down he should go. He's actually got black hole, but he's too low. I think he was thinking about going there because the su support was about to arrive. But just a little bit uh, too poor, a little bit too low on HP to actually black hole that. If he had that BKB, that would have been a very different engagement. That was a critical kill, and I think he actually bought it right before he died. Oh, sorry, he bought the Mithra Hammer right before he died. Unless there's something found. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, Stink's been able to play greedier as, with his four position because Net does such a good job with few items. I mean, this is why Winter calls Net the best support in Southeast Asia. And this is coming from Winter, who is a support player, so he would generally know what he's talking about. We would hope. Uh-oh. Kachikimba. They're backing him up, but it's only with a Keeper. That is not a hero that's going to be able to turn the fight. The one question for Zenith is, besides the ultimates, where does the damage come from? Yamate would be that carry. He's up to 3,200 gold. Yamate is known for... Liking that Radiance, but this late in the game, you got to figure it's something like a Diffusal Blade. It's such a late Radiance, you're up against a Pipe and a Mech. All the Radiance will be good for is Split Pushing and Farming. And not even that good at Split Pushing, mostly Farming. No, I guess KYX is not going for a Pipe. He appears to be going back for a Maelstrom with that Gloves of Haste. Oh, it's a big smoke gank from Zenith. And this was not spotted. There's no Observers anywhere in this area. XY is going to find Net, and Net's going to get scared back. Net will die. Not really the price. Oh, Kachik Emba actually eclipses. That was a blunder. He has to know that Mag is a four staff. And even if the Mag didn't, there's so many heroes here. You're not going to kill anyone. With Eclipse being down, that's a big source of damage for... And in fact, that's their primary source of damage. Because remember, this is really a utility lone druid. As strange as that sounds, we never really see it anymore. It used to be more popular. Their big damage is the Luna Eclipse and the Mushi... Just the Mushi nukes. Oh, he's gonna catch out the Naga with the Split Earth. Really smart play by Mushi. He forces back some TPs, which means Zenith cannot go for the Tier 2 despite Eclipse being down. Normally when this Eclipse is down, and th with these items and the lack of damage, Zenith could force fights. They had RP, they had Black Hole, but Mushi's Split Push draws them back. Critical there, because if this Tier 2 falls, then it gets really hard for the Luna to farm. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Well, I hope there's no technical issues. Yeah, it looks like there's not. Always fun solo casting in that sense. <laughs> well, the game drags on and it's really stalemated. 2200 gold up a Mushi. It's not really a good BKB game. Sure, they're mostly relying on magical damage now. But I feel you need that sight device. You, you need some sort of uh, initiating disable. He could go BKB, but if he gets caught, there's there's still a decent amount of physical damage, like I've talked about already this cast. So I'm not really sure that a BKB is going to be enough. The one thing, that, and even even if you have a BKB, you can still get hexed, and then you're dead anyway before getting to use it. We'll see what he goes for, though. Lincoln Sphere is not a bad option, because that instant hex, as well as the net, and Malphys, those are the primary ways he's going to die, and it kind of forces you to black hole or RP him. Which is not a victory, but a good trade-off, in a sense. Orange has good map control right now. Look at the vision for Zenith. They don't see a whole lot. Naga has gone for the Relic. Cla sort of typical Yamate. He, he likes his farm. He's going to send the Illusions in. The thing is, he can't farm with this hero anymore. Because, again, they're playing mostly in the dark. Even... Uh, even if they have some vision of their jungle, they don't see the enemy heroes. They don't see them moving through the... Oh, top lane. 
XY could be in trouble. No, nope, he's gonna blink. Away. Now he's going towards refresher. Zenith's lineup, it's very hard to break the base versus them. That's kind of why I thought that you would go for split push if you're orange. You go for you're getting the Luna and the Lone Druid really fat as true carries because you're up against Black Hole, Son of the Siren, and RP, and it's soon to be a double RP. It's very hard to go high ground against that. Zenith continue to farm where they can. They do kind of have to stick together. You'll notice even when they're moving through their jungle, there's two, three heroes next to each other. And that's just a byproduct of their lack of map control. Even when Yamate goes to farm, he needs support. Whereas we see heroes like KYXY just farming the top lane by himself, creating that pressure. Uh, knowing that they still have their tier 2 top, and also that his team is pressuring the bottom lane. Oh, here comes the initiation. It's on a Naga Illusion! Oh, they're epicentering a Naga Illusion! Extinct with a rare mistake! It is an epicenter. It's not the end of the world. I don't think Zenith can really go for Rosh or do anything particularly to punish this. But epicenter is an important ability until this Luna gets... Manta's nice, but you need that butterfly. You need that next item to really do a lot of damage. We'll see if he goes for it. Hex does remove evasion. They do have Lion. So Butterfly may... It will give them some much-needed damage, though. I feel they really need damage. And Lone Druid is, is completing the pipe in the end. So he got the Maelstrom Nice Guard back for the pipe. Kind of a schizophrenic build. They do have two strong carries. Zenith is very reliant on their team fight. Buybacks and Aegis will be a huge factor in this game because Zenith is so reliant on their team fight. Even if they have a good fight, if heroes like Lone Druid and Luna are able to buy back, it may not matter. Speaking of buyback, we don't have any now. This will be more of a factor later on. Still, fantastic vision from Orange. If you just go back and watch this replay and do some like time-lapse photography, dare I say it, I don't think there's been more than a couple of minutes where they haven't had fantastic vision all over the enemy jungle. There was the big blunder from Extinct Epicenter in that illusion. But hey, I mean, it's it's late there. It's been a long day. I, Orange did not expect this match to be so late originally. And Zenith, do they have a smoke? They don't. No smoke up. They have the BKB on Enigma. And there's only one way to cancel that, and that's Entangle. This could be a tough fight. Also, these familiars can be very annoying. They can try and deny them. Oh, <laughs> no, they can't. The one thing about familiars that I dislike is they're just so freaking easy to kill. Even at level 3. Oh, there's a big initiation. Mushi gets picked off to start the fight. Oh boy, he's gonna buy back, but I think it might be too late. He's got a TP to the tier 2 bottom. They've got to get out of here. Eclipse comes out. Ice, ice, ice. BKBs. Eclipse is down. Mushi's back. Roche is not dead yet, though. And Orange can... Oh, Zenith can have to go right back in. They have the RP. They've got the Blink and the Skewer. Aegis is claimed by Kachin Gimbo, but he may die. He's got the BKB still. There's your RP. Catches both of the carries. Uh-oh. Black Hole as well. Kachin Gimbo will die once. And if he dies once, he's probably dying twice. Epicenter is here. Nice disruption to the fight by Extinct. Illuminates. Flashes through. The song is there, but it's too late. I think he might have double tapped there because it got instantly cancelled. Oh boy, Nile Ice is gonna fall. That buyback from Mushi was nice. The key to that fight, there were two things. Well, actually three. One of them was the Aegis on Kachik Emba, and then the other two, the other big thing was the magical damage. Extinct and net with some massive plays. Huge epicenter catching everyone. Zenith got a little clumped, and Orange, they got him right where they want him now, baby. This is looking like Orange's game to win, and Zenith being favored by most of the pros and very knowledgeable people in the scene who I talk to based on the way they've been performing scrims. They're not looking too good right now. And again, this is Orange without Ohio, without what I would really say is... I mean, obviously you've got Mushi, but I think Ohio is kind of the unsung hero of any team he plays for. Sinner was just talking to me about how oppressed he's been with Ohio from the GST challenge. They're going to look to make the base now. And even if they fight this, there's no, there's no black hole, there's no RP, and there's multiple carries to deal with. That the skewer is going to catch out Mushi. Mushi hexed up. He went for Moons of Travel, but he's mecked and he's going to be alive for now. KYXY, this bear is just freaking unkillable. He gets netted up. The Rax is starting to drop. Mushi's dropping low, though. Mushi may fall. His orange overextended. It looks like they may have. There is no epicenter for 30 seconds. I don't think there's any big ultimates up right now for either team. And, oh, not enough to get the kill. Kachikan was able to escape. They're going to have a fresh pipe, they're going to have a fresh mech very soon, but Arch have d gotten what they came for, which is get the tier 3, do a bunch of damage, now you have to worry about Black Hole and RP being off cooldown. Uh, well, RP. Black Hole's still on cooldown for quite a while. 
Uh, but even Son of the Siren can buy time and also set up that big black hole. You cannot ask for a better team fight. I mean, the way it went for Zenith. If there was no Aegis, fight would have been a lot different. Also, if that epicenter didn't get off. But, I mean, this is what we talk about, is when you have RP and Black Hole, these spells are only good if you catch all the enemy carries. Otherwise, you, when they're done, you sort of have nothing left in a lot of cases. And they they did catch both. They caught the Lone Druid and the Luna. But, I mean, this Lone Druid has a pipe and a mech. He's one of the tankiest Lone Druids you'll ever see. And if he gets Assault Kuras, then it's just going to be a death ball. KYXY, up to 3,500 gold. He's not even far off of it. Luna goes Helm of the Dominator. May just go Satanic so she can live through the combo, which is also a very viable build. If, you know, the alternative is Butterfly, which gives them the damage. Though an Extinct's hitting, you know, three, four hero epicenters and Illuminate's hitting all those heroes, then maybe you don't need it. Mushi with the Boots of Travel Bloodstone. It's a nice build. When you have this kind of a lead, you respawn faster with Bloodstone. You can come instantly come and rejoin the fights, and especially on this Neolution, uh, or on this Arch lineup, when they have Lone Druid Bear, because you can just instantly TP there. You can also be recalled by Net, but it also just helps you with split push, you know, we're seeing Mushi take advantage of that. Is Orange really gonna 3-0 Zenith? Especially without Ohio. This is very impressive. And what really impresses me about the way this game's going is Orange did something very different, and I feel they really caught Zenith by surprise. Zenith did not anticipate that offensive tri lane. That's the only way to explain it. Because if they did, why would you pick Lion? It just doesn't make sense. There were definitely better options in the pool, but not expecting it. And then Orange throwing them for a loop, even leaving the new guy. I guess the one big reason Zenith didn't expect it is that it's Kajik Imba on the carry, and he's been getting a lot of support in all of these games. I think this is the first game we've seen him not getting any support, really. And boy, did he deliver. So best out of five. Orange leading 2-0. This could be trouble for Zenith. And I think they have that amazing team fight. But there will be there's gonna be a quickly respawning Lush Rack. Or possibly a buyback Lush Rack. Luna's got buyback, Lone Druid's got buyback. I saw Kuras is coming soon. He's got the hyperstone. Boy, he's real close. I think he's like 500. Uh, or no, like a thousand gold away. Yep, about a thousand gold away. <laughs> Keeper of the Light. Just messing around with his illusions. It's a very well executed just starvation strategy from Orange. Pressuring multiple lanes simultaneously, using that Keeper of the Light to move their carries around to be where they need to be, abusing that dire advantage. Even the item selections make a lot of sense. The early pipe mech and it seemed like they lacked damage. But what we what I didn't bank on was Mushi getting as fat as he did in that tri lane. And a lot of that's tower gold. A lot of that's creeps. Except the 200 CS. And you really... Uh... Yeah, Extinct just RP'd the ground. So... This could get a lot harder for Zenith. This could get a lot harder. <laughs> Jeez. The Orange doesn't know about this because it was on the high ground. So if they don't know, it might not turn out to matter. But that is the kind of thing that can just instantaneously lose your game. I assume that was a mistake. Although Zenith is known for kind of messing around once they either once they've won or clearly lost a game. Once the game's decided. Boy, oh boy. Full map control for Orange. Superior levels and farm on pretty much every single here. You compare roll to roll. And I think across the board, you'll find that everybody has a massive advantage. It's over a 15k goal lead. It's over a 15k experience lead. Saw so Karras up on the Lone Druid. He's got it now. Satanic's coming soon. That's the only thing I, I see that they're really waiting for. Once they get the Satanic, if he doesn't get completely chain stunned, and I mean absolutely completely, then he's going to be able to BKV Satanic and go be back to full health or quite healthy HP anyway, almost instantly. And with Pipe and Mech, you also have to stop the Lone Druid from piping and mechie anymore. He's probably going to live anyway, because Satanic gives you a lot of HP. They're actually breaking, trying to break the base now, but they are fighting without the Luna, who I imagine will be recalled very soon. Keep the Light's just a little bit north of here, but he's actually heading with an Invis room back towards Radiant's mid. Okay, they're not going in. Is under attack. I was going to say, that's definitely not a good idea. Just buying time for that Luna to get Satanic. Next Roche is in four minutes. If they want to wait for this, they can. Zenith is helpless. Ice is in a lot of trouble. Oh god, he runs into a BKB Luna who's just gonna throw the BKB out there. 
And then should walk away. Does not want to get caught by a blink skewer when that wears off. RP is off cooldown, so the double RP is back up. I think this was a ward. Bullet dodged. Zenith dodged one bullet, but there's a lot more in the chamber. Oi, 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 is there ever. It is really a triple carry strategy. Even though the Lone Druid built utility, now he goes back for Maelstrom and AC, and all of a sudden he does a crap load of damage. He's basically invulnerable. And Luna is too, and she's gonna have her. Well, she's pretty much got her Satanic. Satanic is one of the most expensive items in the game. But it is well worth the cost on a lot of carries. And this is certainly, when you're up against teamfight, Satanic is the perfect item to get for your carry. And up with this many teamfight ults and with so little damage, where's the damage even going to come from? I mean, it's just... We don't see the carry mag that we saw earlier today in the third, fourth place decider. By the way, that was a really fun game. Uh, first departure versus Neolution Ant. I believe it was game number three. I believe it was Neolution Ant who did it. And that one was a blast to cast. Actually, I can't remember for sure, but I think that was it. Zenith's going to smoke up. This smoke has to work. If they waste their ults, if they only catch a support, then the next Roche is going to be out. And remember, that next Roche will be out before Black Hole cools down. They may find Lone Druid. This would be a very important kill. Lone Druid does not a buyback, but look at KYXY just frantically escaping. Boy, if that line had a Blink Dagger, if he wasn't so freaking poor, they would have gotten that kill. Could Blink Hex then follow up. And they only have the Tier 2 up mid, so they wouldn't be able to TP him to defend, but... Good luck with this line, ever farming a blink. Oh, they may catch Mushi. Mushi doesn't have BKB. He'll kill Mushi, but I feel this isn't the hero that you really need to kill. It's still a good kill. Extinct's gonna force staff him away, but now cost himself his own life. Should have left his carry load. Maybe not. He's got a blink dagger cooling down in two seconds, but Shockwave prevents it. He sandstorms. He's trying to be recalled, I think, but it got cancelled. Now they force staff in again. Just not able to do anything. Now he's hexed up. He loses the gem as well. That's a big win. But meanwhile, the bear breaching high ground. Here comes the sleep. KYXY hoping it. Hoping it. Run, little bear, run. He's going to get away. Could she get simultaneously? This is the really the story. This was the story of the laning phase. Or once it ended, it was Luna in one lane, Lone Druid in another. And although they get the kills bottom, they don't kill either of the true core heroes. Mushi was kind of the primary DPS around 25, 30 minutes. He's not now. He's more of... And a, like a, he's the ice seed on the cake, basically. He's not a core Radiance hero, especially with how he's built. Has been denied. If Lone Dr Oh, and he's got the Satanic now. It's got to be a perfect team fight to kill this Luna. Carry Naga is not particularly strong against Luna once it gets to this point in the game either, because Glaives just wreck the illusions. And unlike Phantom Lancer, you don't constantly create more illusions. You just get that one set, and he's not even gone for Manta, so... Especially with AC and Maelstrom, they can deal with Naga illusions. If they're able to auto attack, if they're not just chain stun and burst down, those illusions are not going to be scary the way that carry Naga illusions can be in other games. Boy, if Orange does not win this game, you just got to call it uh, an incredible comeback by Zenith. They're up 20k gold, they've got more carries, they've got the Roshan advantage, they've been getting all the Roshas, in fact. They've got massive farm in all their carries. I feel like the only way they can lose this is to... If this, is if Luna's not able to BKB Satanic in a fight and she's caught without buyback. Speaking of buyback... Oh, she mances. About 50 away. 40 away. Should have it now. There you go. She finally got a creep. Ice, ice, ice. Boy, if they go on to lose this game as well, you... He, he just couldn't deal with the Luna. And it wasn't a full Luna either. It's something that Enigma should be able to deal with. Rare to see Ice 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 getting, uh, losing his lane, especially with such a good matchup. Scythe of Ice up a Mushi. And Mag does not have a BKB, so it's possible we can see him jump in, just get hexed, and then they can burst him down very quickly. They really, I feel, should save this for the Mag. That is the core hero that they want to go on. Naga could have started with the Sleep. I feel should have been sleeping there, and it would catch Extinct even if he's lurking in the trees. But Luna's going to be breaching high ground momentarily. Zenith's going to have to back. They recall Luna. This is Roche. Zenith, as, as soon as they send one hero, it looks like Zenith is going to let the creeps hit the tower. And Orange is not going to go for Roche until they see Zenith off the map. Once they see a hero top, they send Visage. Maybe they can still fight Roche without Visage. I think Arj is just gonna... Well, they might just bide their time. They don't have to go for Roche now, because it's not like Zenith is gonna get it. 
Wait for a better opportunity. That would be the safer way to go. You see the familiar scouting out. Roche is on the minds of all the players in this game. Kachikimba, 2,800 gold. That butterfly will be the next choice for him. Now Mushi can go for a BKB. He's got to scout it out. Uh, uh, or not scout it out, but just create that path through. Rather. Uh, and be available to set up a split earth into the pit if they need it. How's Net doing? I mean, he's had the four staff, the gem. Poor Net, not as rich as he would like. It's just the Visage top. If they see any other heroes top, if they see like an Enigma there, they will go Roche. They're still lurking with a couple of their cores in the area. And remember, even if one of them's not there, Keeper can always show up. Maelstrom complete on the Lone Druid. Wow, he is really gonna hurt. I actually wanna do a quick H. That's a Naga Illusion, just the Lone Druid Bear. I mean, she's... Oh, oh, how did I miss that? They got a kill on the Zaga to start. Moshi might be in trouble now as well. He's got the Sight device. He still is not used it. I guess it wouldn't have mattered. RP was used there. Can Mushi buy back? He cannot. They got two kills. Ultimate Orb on up on the Naga Siren. They still want to go Roche, but if Orange give up too many picks like that, and Zenith are able to get the Aegis, this could go either way. They still have not actually broken the base. The Rax that was low earlier, what was broken has been made fresh and anew, or whatever that biblical saying is. Will be made anew again. <laughs> oh, I don't. I wish I knew my typical say just so I could sound savvy. Kachikim is up to 4k gold. He's got buyback. Lunchra does not. Well, it could have been a much worse fight. And Mag actually wasted his refresher orb, which has a very, very long cooldown. Refresher orb 160. It's almost as long as Black Cool's cooldown. Much longer than the actual reverse polarity. A full minute extra. So he used it, and then they didn't go in for another fight. Zena thought they could, but they're not able to. Zenith is, at some point, this bear is just going to be too big to kill without the entire team focusing it. Especially when he puts the items on the main hero, because he can transfer... Well, if he gets an energy booster, he can transfer some stuff over to the bear. And then it will have monitored these things like the pipe and mech. Still haven't gone Rush. Orange seems to have... Just not... They haven't figured out how to close this game yet. Some of those early deaths on the Luna. Uh, or not early, but mid-game deaths. As well as the pick off some Mushi multiple times. Uh, as well as Extinct. Those two both twice now over the course of the past five to eight minutes. Did get picked off. And they're thinking about Roche again. It's... Okay, screw it, guys. We're going now. And I, I think it's because they saw... Uh, ice 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 top with his Eidolons. He is missing, but yeah, they're gonna get this Roche. It's just gonna melt way too quickly. And with the Roche, this is gonna be... It's only Roche number two, even though they've been dancing around this pit for like a good 14-15 minutes now. It's only Roche number two. We gotta expect they're gonna go for Rack soon. XY's waiting for someone to TP top. He's hoping that they'll come to defend. But Mushi's coming the way he won't expect, which is just running to the tower. They don't actually have any vision on the side of Zenith. They're expecting that push to go mid or bottom immediately. Now they gotta start getting suspicious, but it might be too late. Ice has his BKB, but he doesn't get it off in time now. He's hexed up and caught inside of the trees, but the Eclipse, he doesn't have vision for the Eclipse to actually do anything. Ice is Ice wants to TP away. Where's that root? Where's that root? He... I don't think he actually got a root there, but didn't need it in the end. I mean, if you have an Assault Currents me on or Bear, you deserve a freaking root. He might have gotten one right at the end, I couldn't actually tell. <laughs> so they get the kill on the Enigma. Ice 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 is getting close to Refresher. Well, they're gonna have double Black Hole and double our- Oh, Burrow Strike in, they catch out Ice, who also does not have buyback. This would be- uh, Or who doesn't have buyback, I should say. And they just got the Aegis down. He's only a support, but that's two heroes dead. 40 seconds until he respawns. Luna, uh, whoever is pushing on their own can be recalled by Keeper, but Keeper cannot get caught here. XY's waiting. They want to fight outside of the base. They don't want to let Orange break the high ground. No. Okay, they're going to fight at the base. I mean, if you're down two, two lanes of racks, you kind of have to fight outside the base. But when you have all your racks, you generally don't want to. But 
Arch just is a little afraid, and you can see the illusions are doing a nice job of stopping this push. Those heart illusions. Oh, they're going to re breach high ground. There will be no backdoor protection as there is no tower here, so the rack starts to fall. Kachik Emma working away on it. Oh, there's a Phantom Lance. Such patient play from Orange. <laughs> Gandalf forcing himself towards the bottom lane. Butterfly up on the Luna, who does not have buyback. They're actually gonna back off. Orange is just not confident they can break the space. It just... I mean, when you're ahead this much gold, which actually isn't that much at this point in the game, it's 71k versus 88k, it's still a lot, though, and it's also the team composition, where Zenith, the only damage is the Naga, really. There's a pipe, there's a mech, there's a BKB on the Luna, so those heroes don't really care about all your magical damage at all. MKB is coming next for the Luna. They should be able to siege this with Mantle-style illusions with the Lone Druid Bear. He does have a resummon available. All the ultimates are up for both teams, except for the Keep of Light, which doesn't really matter. Kajikimba is going to be netted. Will he use that Mantle-style? Not just yet. The Rax is dropping quickly. That's an Impale. Catches out the Luna. The Bear goes down immediately. Kajikimba needs to run. Oh, not quite enough. Trying to bring him down. Oh, they pop the E just without having to use any of the ultimates. Arn should have to back now. This is very, very risky, but the RP is here. Caught the Luna, but she's BKB'd up. Now Hex on XY. Now the Sleep, so wasting that initial up. But with BKB, Luna still will be able to do the auto attacks. Will be able to throw out the Eclipse. Uh, and, well, the song was blown. It's only got a one minute cooldown. Mag RP number one was blown. Four and Aegis. I still, there's no, there's no, oh, there's no refresher up yet on Zenith. Oh, here comes the Maggie Skewers in. The lone drop, but just these ta these carries are too tanky. They get the racks orange. They finally do it. They did use an Aegis, but once you get one, the next ones generally get easier. Wow. This game. It's looking like Orange is series. It just has that aura about it at this point. MKB should be coming out soon on the lone druid. see a spectator disconnect and if orange really want to play the safe what they'll do is just keep really good ward vision up they'll make sure that they're protecting their carries and that they're keeping an eye on the map and they'll basically split push until that next rush comes because that'll be aegis and cheese that that would be the safe way to play this one they still have more items they can get boots of travel and luna they can get one more damage item on her and also buyback so she's got room to farm sand king could get a bkb uh, although it's it's not really, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but since he's going in later in the fights, he can probably dodge the RP in the black hole if he plays it correctly. And Mushi could get a BKB, a Lincoln Sphere, a Heart, I mean something to tank up. Heart on Mushi would actually be very strong. I mean, he's already got the pipe, the mech, and the Assault Caress, so he's pretty survivable. If he just gets raw HP when you've already got all that magic resistance and armor, you become just incredibly hard to kill, but they're not going to wait for the next Roche. They're actually going to group up and force the fight top. The Refresher is still on cooldown for a minute. I couldn't actually tell if they saw Mag use the... Mm. Oh, here we go. Onto the tower. They only have one RP. They have the BKB Black Hole available. Their Axe is dropping quickly. They're sieging this one down. Zenith have to go in. They have that song to start up the fight, but they're not starting it. The tower already falls. And Zenith just kind of stands around like, what do we do? The tower down. Reset, reload, go again. They could wait for Manta Style Illusions, which take a little bit longer on these ranged carries uh, to cool down. MKB is up, but KOXY is not going to build it. He's going to save for buyback. Remember, any carry that dies can be recalled and instantly brought back into the fight. Even though they don't have Aegis, they have the buybacks. They actually have it on all three carries. They're going to initiate the fight of Kapuka Kachi Gimba, who gets hexed. If they let him BKB, this fight is probably not going to go their way. I don't even think they're going to fight it. Meanwhile, on the... Oh, here comes the black hole. Where is it? There's the black hole. X-Men got up a nice RP. He's got RP number two. But can they actually bring down the carries? Kachi Gimba still alive, and he's going to turn this fight around. Oh, the refresher was actually delivered. <laughs> It was delivered to Ice 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 in the middle of the fight, but he got chained, bashed, or, or brought down, basically. Couldn't actually get off that second black hole. And he doesn't have buyback because he went for that. That should be a Kachik Emma is way too tanky for this Naga, I feel. To bring it down, maybe not. Yep, yep, yep. There's the lifesteal. Way too tanky, as mentioned. They're going on the racks. Orange are going to take this series. 3-0. Kachik Emma picks up a kill on the Naga Siren, but it's all about the racks. That's going to be their second lane of racks. The third lane to fall shortly. 
Did I say three? I meant two earlier. And yep, that's it. No buybacks. It's gonna be Orange who take the series 3-0. Moshi strikes back, gets his revenge on Yamate. Boy, oh boy, what a way to end this series. Sure, it was 3-0, but all the games were quite interesting, quite unique in their own ways. The team that's known for their versatility was really sent for a loop by the draft of Orange. You have to give them credit for that. Orange did something different. They didn't put Mushi mid. That's what Zenith were expecting. And it's just all orange all the way. What an impressive display from them. That, that throne melts. The game ends. Mushi and friends, the orange team. It wasn't just Mushi, but the reason I keep on mentioning him is because him and Yamate have a bit of a grudge match between them. Mushi gets the edge here. But this is not the end, guys. We will see these two locking heads again, I am sure, as they are two of the top teams, if not the two top, in Southeast Asia. Thank you all very much for tuning in. It's amazing to see such a huge turnout for Asian Dota, breaking over 20,000 viewers. You guys are awesome. Thank you for all your support. Uh, for Beyond the Summit, for Asian Dota, for the SEA League. This is our final broadcast of the SEA League. If you missed any of the games, there is an in-game Dota TV ticket available for $4. You can watch all the replays, first-person perspectives and commentary uh, for pretty much every single game I think we cast once the qualifiers uh, were over. We might have missed one or two in qualifier number one. That's available for you. Uh, if you want to watch free VODs, they're available at youtube.com slash beyondthesummittv. If you want to follow and support me, I'm LD. Uh, one of the main commentators for Beyond the Summit, along with Gods, who is sleepy right now. Hope you're resting well, Gods. Uh, Twitter.com slash LDDota for that. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope to see you guys soon. We actually have a big announcement. I'm going to outro this one quickly, and then I'm going to make that announcement. So stay tuned for that. Oh, and one last thing before I forget. One more final shout-out to all the sponsors and supporters of the SEA League. Zotac, Twitch TV, E-Club, XFX, Geal, Invasion, and a lot of the coverage partners and organizers as well. ELG, Pacific Esports, Dota Talk, Gosu Gamers, uh, and of course, the SEA League. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned for that big announcement right after this.